Greetings, ladies and metal gents, and welcome to this latest rendition of Tales, Tales from Outer from Space. Outer space. Outer space. Taken from the subreddit HFY, all the relevant links will be down below. And as always, I hope that you enjoy, and if you do, please consider supporting the channel. Now, on to the science fiction. I would like to give a special thank you to Fallen Angel, whose support by being a tier 5 channel member is very much appreciated and helps this channel continue on. Nomads, written by Grand Admiral 98. Hey everyone, Tiamat here. Well, uh, this is a bit awkward, but, well, I'm gonna start somewhere. I am safe, first of all, and I'm dictating you all this recording so that you are not afraid of what happened to me. I will be back, don't worry about that, but uh, you won't see me for a while. Listen. I know our people and our species really well, obviously, but uh, I just made a few discoveries. Where you are born, that is where you are and where you should be. Change is always dangerous and never as fulfilling as one could hope for. Why hope for the best? Why dare to hope when there is always disappointment and failure lying around every corner? It is well known that the key to happiness is acceptance. Acceptance of who we are, and making sure that whoever we would want to be is too difficult to achieve from our current position. Make the best of your lot in life and live it to the fullest. That is the key to true happiness, joy, and serenity. This we all know. And yet, you all know Aldea Cat. This solar system is all we ever need. We know it like we know ourselves. And why should we even dare to look beyond when we haven't even solved all of our own problems yet? And to tell you the truth, I agree. Why? Why should we dare to look beyond? There is no purpose out there. There is no undiscovered problems. And looking too far will create more problems. We are happy here. We laugh and laugh and have created almost a paradise for ourselves. Here we are and here we will stay. We have all that we need. We hold each other beside us and we all know that whatever happens, there we are, together, and we'll be okay. And yet, well, I guess I better start at the beginning. I know you all thought I'd always looked a bit too far for a bit too long. I know that at least three of you caught me trying to sneak on a starship from a trade league when I was a kid. Well, to tell you all the truth, I always wanted to get caught. Thought that it would make me a rebel or whatever. Anyway, it's not the point. Sorry, this is harder than it looks. Well, I always wanted to see outside. But I love the family, the system, the station. I loved all of you, and the joy, and the happiness here. I didn't want to leave. Not really. And yet, now, remember a few weeks ago we found that ship out of power, out of food, and running out of oxygen? Well, I was there when the person awoke. And let me tell you, what I saw was terrifying, and so entrancing. When I asked if it was all right, the first thing it said was, Well, then asked a question. Who are you? Yeah, I know that's normal, but it didn't stop. Where am I? What's this bed? How big is your ship? Can you travel faster than light? How many planets in your star system? What do you eat? It didn't end. Every question led to another question, and another, and another. The behavior is curious enough, but well... If it really wants to ask pointless questions, why not? If it acts like a child, treat it like one, right? And yet, over the next few days, as I talked with it and taught it who we are, it was uh, entranced by us, just as I became entranced with it. It always looked further. It always asked, why? How come it's like this and otherwise? Finally, its own curiosity got to be. They are called 
humans, and they are who we used to be, who we were. No, who we still are, but we forgot to be. They read the histories of all the peoples they visit. They sailed the galaxy on warp currents. They named every star they ever visited to remember where they came from, who they were, and who they are now. And I know you won't believe me, but they know who they are. I know we are taught that wanderers are lost in more ways than one, but these people, nomads, are not lost. In fact, I would argue that they are the only ones who truly know who they are and know what they want. They set a course and find a brand new people elsewhere they roam, while keeping their own peoples in their mind. But they don't have a hope, they don't have a joy that we have. And yet, it didn't take long to get the distress signal going in their own language. Trivial, really. But when it came time to record the distress call, the human didn't say, help, come and get me, it said, everyone, I'm safe, the location is safe. There is a friendly species here. I don't know the name of their star, but come to Tiamat Star. Tiamat Star. Don't worry. They changed the name pretty quick, but still. Tiamat Star. It is too greedy to be grateful to have a star named after you. Is it greedy to want that? To want something that not everyone can or should have? Something that will cause discontent. I know that it wouldn't make me sleep better at night, knowing that I had a star named after me. I could do without it. And yet. Well, you know the official first contact with the human fleet, the gigantic ripple of space-time distorting the very nature of reality. First came an advance guard of 10,000 cruiser-sized ships, the first wave. Then gave the capital ship, then the gardener ships, Ships designed never to ever stay in one place. Ships designed to always move further and further away till they reach the edge of the galaxy and sweep beyond it, as they know that they are destined to one day do. They teach the stories of their own elders to all who would listen in the never-ending chain of explorers. Never content to keep what they have, but always seek to the next horizon to colonize. The gardener ships, which leave some named colonies behind, so they remember in which direction home lies, before continuing, past all hope and reason, ever forwards to an ever-receding horizon, one in which they will never reach even so far as the heat death of the universe. And yet, they said that it wouldn't be ever interesting otherwise. What comfort they have that there is some parts of the universe always hard to reach. They decided that they would find curiosity in uncertainty instead of fear. They decided that they would find joy in the ruinous rather than the permanent attachment. They made a decision that they would never find happiness in what they own, or what they have, or have had, nor even in what they are, but instead in what they do. They explore and they couldn't want to do anything else. They could be a ship captain or a planet-born kid. They say that the joy comes not from being explorers, but in exploring. It doesn't come from having a star named after them, but in being worthy of having a star named after them. They don't colonize because they are colonists, but because they love the act of turning rocks into gems. Of course, such projects are rife with hardship and disappointment. And yet, they learned to love not just the good moments, but also the hardship, the disappointment. You heard me, they learned to love the disappointment of dreaming too much, because at least it meant that they were brave enough to dream. It showed that there was still too much to do. As they say, no human nomad ever dies without at least one unfinished project, and they wouldn't have it any other way. Their joy doesn't come from having something consistent, an unchanging system and society, but in action, in their own personal action. They don't have our serenity, nor our joy, nor our happiness. 
Their life is full with disappointment, false hope, sadness, loss, and goodbyes. And yet, they have something we forgot we have. Something more valuable than everything else anyone can give us. More valuable than all the joy and happiness we have at home. Purpose. I know that this is something we all need. I know us. I know you. I know you think I'm crazy, or that I drift too far. I know I'll be your cat, and I know that we are both creatures of stubbornness and pride, and that no one has ever been able to convince either of us wrong of anything. I also know that if he says something, it is both intelligent and wise. We should all mind what he says. But please remember that you may hear a voice inside each one of you, and if that voice starts to whisper, follow the furthest stars. Don't forget that despite anything Alda Yakat might say, that voice inside you is also who you are. So, uh, the nomad fleet came and went, and I went with it. I'm sorry for this change. I know I won't be able to joke around with all of you for a while yet, and that you don't have my back, nor I yours. I know this is stupid, that there is no logical reason to ever follow them, that I will never be as happy as I was back home, and I want to come back every day that I'm gone. But my voice is telling me to keep going, to follow the humans towards the furthest star. I know I will never reach it. Maybe I'll be disappointed in dreaming that is true purpose in my life. I'll almost certainly be afraid or in danger. Maybe I'll turn back. Maybe I'll keep going. Maybe I'll turn back and still find a way to keep going. But I already know one thing. I'm not afraid to dream anymore. I... I'm not afraid anymore. I explore. I look forward. I always learn more. And no matter what, I never forget where I came from. Let me tell you all, I don't regret it. So when you decide to come, look for Tamed Star beyond the horizon. I'll be waiting. End of story. And that, my friends, concludes this video. I hope that you enjoyed, and if you do, please consider supporting the author, even by popping over and leaving a thumbs up or a nice comment, just to show your appreciation for the story. However, if you wish to support this channel, there are links down below which will help immensely. I will see you all in the next one, and until then, I hope that you have a fantastic day. Cheers.